As you all already know and are more than aware of, the Baltimore Ravens has some extremely tough decisions that they have to make. And not just when it comes to choosing who they really want to go after before the NFL trade deadline uh, this upcoming October 31st. But the Ravens, they have some players on their team who they have to make some huge decisions about. And it's not only the ones that you may be thinking about. Like, Ravens have a lot of decisions to make for the future. Number one, uh, Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen has been playing out of his mind at inside linebacker. We know Patrick Queen, he is a monster, and we just love the duo of Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen together. It is amazing. We love it. We enjoy it. Both of them complement each other perfectly. Both of them complement the defense perfectly, and both of them have continued every game to make plays, and we love it. But here comes the dilemma. Patrick Queen, here yeah, they declined his fifth-year option, so he is in the last year of his deal. So... The Baltimore Ravens have to make a decision on whether they want to keep Patrick Queen and not only if they want to keep him, because I'm sure they want to keep him, I'm sure they want to keep everybody, but the money, the money part. And that's where things get real tricky when the business creeps in because Patrick Queen, he could get a decent deal from the Baltimore Ravens for sure. But in my opinion, and I've continued to say this, I think for Patrick Queen, if he's if he just wants the most money that he can possibly get, which you cannot fault him for, don't do that, people. Because I, I hate when people f fault people for, oh, oh he's just chasing the money. Yeah, it's his job. Of course he's chasing the money. But anyway, he could get a lot more money from somebody else than he could from the Baltimore Ravens. Obviously, Baltimore Ravens could provide him with stability and consistency, and he's familiar with everybody and whatnot, the coaching staff, the team, the players. And that's cool. But uh, if he really wanted to get his bills paid, I think it could come from somebody else. Now, um, I would love if the Ravens could keep Patrick Queen, but will they? That's a tough question. This is where, where I really want to hear from y'all. I mean, we always want to hear from y'all, but especially in this special episode. And uh, another person that they got to make a decision on uh, who has also been balling out of his mind is Justin Matabike. Oh, Justin Matabike. And he's somebody that uh, he's a defensive lineman. And I mean, you can't call him a defensive tackle. You can't call him a defensive end because he's been playing uh, a lot of both. Throughout this season uh, He's racking up his sack numbers uh, He is producing and, and that's important Because in your contract year Especially if you Like you could show potential Throughout your career or whatnot But when you're actually producing Especially when it's contract year It, it, it seems like the, the light has turned on It seems like he hit that corner And it's like oh boy <laughs> It's just a matter of BK time baby And we love to see it we, we, we love to see it and because that makes the Baltimore Ravens team that much better. And you know the Baltimore Ravens would want to keep him as well. But again, the question remains, will they be able to? Because pass rushers, like we talked about Patrick Queen, but pass rushers, and Patrick Queen, can't, he, he can't rush the passer, but pass rushers in this passing league, like teams will pay a hefty dollar amount for those players. So, this is not going to be one of those, like with Patrick Queens, his deal, whatever it could possibly be with the Baltimore Ravens, it would have to it would, it would have to be a good amount of money, but I feel like it would need to be a bit more team-friendly. Well, Justin Matabike, you're not going to be able to get him for no team-friendly deal, man. And hey, you may not even be able to get Patrick Queen for a team-friendly deal, but Justin Matabike, ooh, <laughs> that is going to cost you a lot of bread. And then somebody else who has been playing out of their mind and making the most of every single opportunity is the league leader after seven weeks of this NFL season. He didn't even start every game, but he is the league leader in interceptions, Geno Stone. And Geno Stone has brought up a very uncomfortable conversation for a lot of Baltimore Ravens fans because we know Marcus Williams, we know what he can do. And Marcus Williams can play. Don't get it twisted. That boy can play. Uh, but now it's had a lot of people questioning, oh, should the Ravens really step out there? And no, maybe not. Because I've seen it. I saw it, I think, yesterday on Twitter. Somebody suggested that the Baltimore Ravens actually after this year trade Marcus Williams and keep Geno Stone. Now, that would certainly be something. I don't see them making a bold move like that. But, hey, you never know in this day and age of the NFL. But I, I just don't see it happening. But, again, you, you never know. Uh, but with Geno Stone um, in Marcus Williams' absence, he has been making the most of every single opportunity. And he has earned himself a nice payday. Now, uh, people have said, hey, we should keep Geno Stone, too. I just, I just don't see it, though. I, don't, I would love for them to keep Geno Stone, but I just don't see them keeping 
Geno Stone because of two things. One, they already paying Marcus Williams. Two, they drafted Kyle Hamilton in the first round. And even though Kyle Hamilton has not been playing the traditional safety role, he's a, he's a little bit of everything. Like we always say, Kyle Hamilton is just a baller. That's that's his position is a baller for the Ravens. Um, but with Marcus Williams specifically, they paid him a lot of money to be their safety uh, of the here, the now, and the future. Uh, and with Geno Stone, I don't foresee them paying him a lot of money as well. And then with Geno Stone, you got to think about it too. Like if Marcus Williams is still with the team, if I'm Geno Stone, what am I stick around for? Like, hey, I'm glad. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm glad everything worked out like this. Obviously, not glad that Marcus Williams got hurt, but glad that. Geno Stone was able to make the most of his opportunity, but beyond that, it's like, uh, what am I stay here for? What you want me to come at? Come back as a backup? Oh no, uh, uh-uh, uh, no. I'm I shown that I can start. I shown that I can play. I know that I can play. You know that I can play. I want to play, and, and that's it. So I don't foresee Geno Stone. I, I I've been saying that this is Geno Stone. His farewell tour to the Baltimore Ravens again. Because remember, they drafted Geno Stone, then they cut him, and then uh, he went to the Texans. I think. Then he came back. Uh, but he um and he's been doing his thing uh, pretty much ever since. So shout out to Geno Stone, man. But that's that's some of the toughest decisions that the Baltimore Ravens got to make. But it does not stop there. See, those are the main three. Like, and those are some really big decisions. But Ravens got even more that they have to make because we also got Rashad Bateman and Rashad Bateman. Um, it's been a rough season for him so far. It hasn't been going how I anticipated it would go because y'all know I I continue to say it. All off season going into this year that I thought Rashad Bateman was going to be the Baltimore Ravens number one receiver, even with Odell Beckham Jr., even with Mark Andrews, even with Zay Flowers. I thought that it was going to be Rashad Bateman this year for sure. And there's still time for it to happen, but it hasn't quite happened yet. Um, so we're still waiting on that corner to be turned, but this is a big year for Rashad Bateman because after this year, the Baltimore Ravens have to decide whether or not they want to pick up his fifth year option. So is next year going to be the final year of Rashad Bateman's contract or will he have two years left? Uh, that is for the Baltimore Ravens to determine and hopefully for Rashad Bateman to put that pressure on him to where it's like, okay, hey, y'all, y'all want, y'all might want to pick this thing up. So we'll see what happens with that. And speaking of wide receivers, the Baltimore Ravens got some more tough decisions to make because Odell Beckham Jr., he's on a one-year deal. And with his one-year deal, he has four void years on the back of it. So Ravens could re-sign him to a contract extension or something like that. Right now, the way things are going, and it's still early. It's still very early. I don't foresee it right now. The things could change, but... We'll see what happens, even though what Odell Beckham Jr. continued to say, the Ravens didn't just sign him. They didn't sign him to put up all these sexy numbers and whatnot. They signed Odell Beckham Jr., number one for Lamar Jackson, <laughs> but also number two, they signed him for the playoffs. They signed him for that experience. They signed him to be a mentor to the other uh, receivers and to help the quarterback out, too, uh, because with the Baltimore Ravens, a lot of times what happens with them is it's a mental game, and, and they, they end up losing the mental game. Obviously, injuries have been a big part of everything too but there can be these mental lapses that the Baltimore Ravens have and to have somebody that has that experience and that successful experience uh, being a Super Bowl champion that helps a lot so Ravens got to make a decision on Odell Beckham Jr. as well and another decision speaking of wide receiver speaking of Super Bowl champion wide receiver that the Baltimore Ravens got to make a decision on Nelson Aguilar Nelson Aguilar is signed to a one-year deal as well so and he, he's been doing pretty good. I, I would say that the Baltimore Ravens, like, I feel like he, but besides Zay Flowers, obviously, but Nelson Aguilar, as far as free agent receivers and whatnot, he has been the, the best one for the Baltimore Ravens thus far. And I know Odell dealt with injuries and whatnot, but, I mean, it is what it is. Nelson Aguilar has been a pleasant surprise for the Ravens. I, I really liked him uh, a lot this so far this season. Um, so they got a decision to make with him. Hey, do we want to bring him back? Do we want to give him a contract extension? Or do we say, you know what, Nelson Aguilar, thanks for everything, but we're going to move forward in a different direction now. So, hey, that's, these are tough decisions, baby. Now, another one is still at the wide receiver department, Devin DuVernay, who I feel like a lot of people haven't been talking about this because with Devin DuVernay, they got a tough decision to make with him, too, because he is in the last year of his deal. So with Devin DuVernay, what are you going to do there? Do you keep Devin DuVernay? Do you sign him to a contract extension? Or do you say, you know what, Devin DuVernay, it's been an amazing, wonderful four years. But 
We are going to have to cut the cord. Uh, we'll see. With Devin DuVernay, I can see them signing him to a modest uh, contract extension. It obviously wouldn't be anything crazy, anything like that. But just to have their return guy. And, I mean, they could go find another return guy uh, for kick return and per return duties. But um, we'll see. We'll see with Devin DuVernay. I, 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 but I, I could see them keeping him uh, because it's not going to command them much money. And he's somebody that can come in and play receiver as well. He's not just a return man, but he can be a receiver too uh but we'll see what happens with him somebody else that the baltimore ravens gotta make a big decision on uh is jk dobbins and jk dobbins a lot of times this year he has been a forgotten man um simply because he he was here in week one and i forget about that a lot but he also scored a touchdown in week one um, so J.K. Dobbins, man, it's is, is unfortunate how things ended for him and how things went for him this year. I was really hoping that he was going to be able to do his thing this year because this offense would be great for him. He'd be able to be catching passes out of the backfield like we've seen with a lot of the running backs and whatnot. And just his ability uh, that it, he, he was going to show that he could continue to go off. But it all ended not after the first game of the season. And that was a big, big, big blow. Um, you feel for J.K. Dobbins. But now Ravens, they have to decide, like, hey, with J.K. Dobbins, we know the ability is there. We know what he can do. But the injury history is also there. And the injury history has sort of clouded uh, the ability. Um, it's sort of gotten in the way of everything that J.K. Dobbins is capable of. So the Baltimore Ravens have a decision to make whether they want to uh Give J.K. Dobbins another chance And if they do bring him back You know it's not going to be a crazy deal I, it, the, the guarantees on it would probably be minimal um, I think it would be like a one year deal At most maybe they could structure it for a two year deal To sort of lower the cap hit or whatnot, And then it would be like Minimal guarantees in the first year And no guarantees in the second year So if they wanted to cut them It wouldn't be anything crazy But that's another decision that the Baltimore Ravens Have to make and I'm sure there are more decisions that I couldn't even think of that I'm sure y'all remember, but just wanted to bring those to the forefront because I, I, I do not envy Eric DaCosta's job at all because it is an extremely tough job, extremely tough job. Um, not, not a paycheck, I'm sure the, the, the pay is nice, but the decisions that he has to make for the Baltimore Ravens, for their football team, their franchise, it is extremely, extremely hard. Um, but something that's not hard uh, is the fact that you can get 10% off of one of these varsity jackets. That, I mean, that's so easy. Like, who doesn't want 10% off of something? Who doesn't want a discount off of something? Now, I, I know a lot of y'all been asking, where do you get these varsity jackets from? Well, you can go to standwithusclothing.com. The link is right down below in the description. Uh, it'll take you straight to where you can get your own varsity jacket so you could be looking all clean when you're walking down the street and whatnot. You might have some, some the, the, those black, gray, and white Air Maxes that will literally go perfectly with this. I actually got them myself uh, for the, uh, the the black and purple one. Uh, you could have those black and purple Jordans that just recently... <coughs> Are they the 12s? I think they're the 12s, the Jordans that... I didn't get them, but those black and purple ones. Uh, I mean, and then you could have the, 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 the ones. You could have... Uh, you could have dunks. Like, you, you got so many different color combinations that you could wear of shoes with these jackets. Because they, they clean, man. They clean. Uh, but go to standwithusclothing.com. Again, the link is down below in the description. Uh, so you can get yours. Use code engraving for 10% off. Simple as that. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all so much. There's so many times when, and it's a side note, where I just, um, sometimes I just be reading the comments and stuff, and um, I really appreciate y'all a lot, man. Y'all show uh, tons of support. Y'all show tons of love. And sometimes I just re be reading all the comments and just almost be tearing up, man, because I just really appreciate how y'all are. I, I really do. Y'all just show a lot of love, and y'all give y'all opinions on whatever it is that we're talking about respectfully. Y'all give y'all opinions consistently, and y'all always come through no matter what. And I will for all, forever and always appreciate that and appreciate y'all. Y'all keep being good people. Y'all keep being great people. Y'all have a great day. Uh, we got questions from subscribers coming up later. Y'all be on the lookout for that. Subscribe and turn your notifications on so you do not miss videos like these or anything else that we do on this channel. I love you. I appreciate you. And we out.